And we are live. Thank you for joining us, everyone. This is going to be a very, very interesting and special presentation. We have a special guest on tonight, and we're going to be talking about inspections. Is that not my worst fear? When, when we do taxes at the beginning of the year, I hate surprises. I absolutely hate it. Make sure if you're watching, make sure that you let us know that you can see us and you can hear us okay, because I don't want anybody to miss a minute of this presentation. You're going to introduce yourself? I am Wally from Supreme Gecko. <laughs> and Nanette. So when we do taxes, I hate it because I don't like surprises. We haven't been, ever been surprised by taxes, but uh, it's just such a huge fear. I hate surprises. So I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine somebody knock, knock, knock. Hey, we want to see your whole setup. Uh, we're going to find out from Jennifer tonight how that went, how she prepared, <clears throat> excuse me, how she prepared and what she kind of expected from this whole inspection and how it went down and what her takeaways from this inspection was. Um, I think this is going to be incredible because hopefully if it's like you, if you're thinking about selling isopods, if you sell isopods, if you're buying isopods, you should know this information because you could have somebody knocking on your door in the future as well. So let's go ahead and bring on Jennifer Phillips and let's talk Hello. about inspections. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you guys? Doing good. How are you doing tonight? Excellent, excellent. Fantastic. Molly, so, somewhere? You, oh, yeah. Molly, the toucan? Yep. What's the toucan? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toucan for everybody. <laughs> Now, everybody, this is going to be kind of a, a very focused presentation here tonight. We can talk about isopods, uh, specific care issues. We sometimes have questions kind of jump in, but let's hold all of those until the end or just PM me if you have some kind of a special question. This is going to be very focused on Jennifer's experience with this inspection and how it went and especially how can you prepare? How can you get yourself ready for an inspection if you ever had an inspection? So I was just mentioning, knock, knock, knock. Hey, we want to see your whole setup. But before we go there, I'd like to know a little bit more about Jennifer, your company. Um, walk us through how it all started with you and Isopods, all the way through what you're keeping today. And when you first realized, and also the preparation for just in case you were inspected, and then finally walk us all the way to that knock on the door, if you would, Jennifer. Okay, uh, let's see. So um, I'll just start with, I was, you know, the young child that was went and found all the critters out in the world, frogs, snakes, brought them home to mom. Uh, she didn't like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, for a short time, Many years ago, I was a zookeeper, so mostly with primates and birds. Um, then I transferred back to working at a law firm for many years, but I was always doing something with animals. So I was always, um, you know, I was a docent at the Bronx Zoo. I worked at a wildlife rehabilitation. Um, so there was always something involved with animals. So in 2019, my friend Lisa and I, decided to take part in the Los Angeles Zoo docent training program. Um, and one of the things that I learned in that program is that I could keep poison dart frogs. Um, uh. And it just blew my mind. Um, so with that and with the bioactive, I, you know, had everybody's gateway drug, the, the dwarf white. Um, so I started those and then I started discovering other kinds of isopods mostly at shows um, going online checking them out you know they're like Pokemon I gotta have that one um, and I I'm one of those people that I kind of deep dive into everything and so um, you know I kind of went from hey what's this dwarf white to a closet full of isopods um, and right now I am, whoops, sorry about that. It's my phone. Um, right now I am a canine separation anxiety specialist. Oh. That's what I do for a living. Um, so I'm still working with animals. And um, I have started on the side. I'm very much in startup mode. 
in two weeks is my first reptile show and I'm petrified mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's going to be mostly isopods and uh, maybe some of my frogs and just some other kind of stuff that I put together, fun stuff. Um, and what else, what did I leave out? Oh, so I can tell you what my absolute favorite isopod is, is the Bolivari. Yes. Oh, oh man. They made me earn my keep. <laughs> they just, I had, you know, the first time I saw them, like, just pff, what the heck is that? Um, and I got them, you know, probably before I should have. I probably should have, you know, done a little more work with other than, you know, other isopods. I did. But when you get to Bolivari, you realize, like, oh man, I don't know if I know anything about these creatures. Um, you know, and I, I don't know about your Bolivari, but I can kind of tell how mine are doing by their coloring, right? Interesting. Yeah, so when they're brighter yellow, they're more active, they're around. And I found that doing things like I will just take out that bin and put it on the floor in the room and turn on the fan, um, uh -huh. the fan blow around. Um, and they'll get more yellow, a little more active. I'm not the baby. Interesting. They're kind of a little lighter, but oh man, the first time I saw them have babies, I just oh. lost it. I was like, oh, I'm doing something right. Oh. <laughs> so those are my favorites. Um, number two are the Hoffman Say Say guy, Hoffman Say. I am going to ruin every Latin name. Um, I, I, I love the big guys. Um, you know, one day my bucket list is Flavo Marginatus, Sixpanses. Um, I also love the Armadillidium, you know, the magic potions are some of my favorites. Um, what else do I have that is just, I mean, they're all so wonderful. Yeah, I, they're, they're all wonderful, but, but definitely the large <laughs> one is my favorite. I think the same thing, especially with the Bolivari, you know, it's all the giant Spanish are my, you know, at the top of my list. Um, Hoffman Sega is at the very top, but not very far below that is uh, Bolivari, Expanses, Magnificus. Um, you know, when I look at all of those, I, you're right. They, they take very special care and you have to real, I think you have to know what you're doing. And then somebody else will pick them up and just go nuts with them. You know, my colony goes from, you know, 50 to 60 to 70 to 80 to 90, 100 down to another 20. Wow. And then it builds back up and then it drops down again. I, I just can't build it and keep it growing like that. But yeah. wonderful, wonderful animal. So how many isopods are you keeping right now? Um, how many dart frogs are you keeping? My dart frogs, I have, um, I'm, I'm actually like looking around. I have two Pamilio species. Uh, I have a pair of Aratus. A pair of Leucamelis, a trio of Phyllobates mint, trio of Phyllobates uh, orange blackfoot, and I have a lot of mint dart froglets right now. Oh, and I'll tell you, cool. I'll tell you that story because it 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 all kind of fits into the um, inspection and how that couple of days before the inspection went because it was it's been a wild week. <laughs> For sure, for sure, it's been really wild. Yeah. Um, how how do you take care of everything? You know, I know that you you have other things going on, especially your your new um, occupation. How do you find the time to keep all of these animals and take care of them and be current with the regulations? And <laughs> um, yeah, I'm tired. Um, you know, I'm. I'm literally a born zookeeper. It's ah. what I love to do. You know, I love to, um, you know, here's a fun story is that I was sort of gifted a, a giant koi betta. And, ah. you know, I, I got this fish and I've had fish throughout my life. But I mean, the last time I had a fish, I don't remember any of this. I remember like the water line would come down a bit. I'd kind of like top it off a bit. And that was it. And he maybe lived like two years. His name was Tom Brady. And then that was it. Uh, I got him on Super Bowl Sunday weekend. And so, 
Um, now I'm like testing water and considering CO2 <laughs> filters and UVB lights or UV lights and, um, you know, like a bioactive kind of substrate. And it's just a whole different ball game. And to be kind of taken down a notch to total newbie, I mean, pretty much because I didn't keep a fish like this before. It's humbling. It's extremely humbling. Um, but like I said, I think that just because this is what I do, it's, it's a lot easier for me than it would be, um, for someone that wasn't as, you know, into animals, I guess. It's probably easier for you because you know how to research, you know, yeah. how to disseminate between lots of, I'm going to say it probably the wrong way here, but lots of Facebook information yes. uh, as opposed to the focused, I don't want to say expert, knowledgeable, experienced keeper kind of information, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes for people, that's kind of hard. Um, I know what you mean about the fish. I was out of fish and then got back in after about 20 years. And, and I felt very humbled as well with the names and changing, you know, genus and species. And yeah. then all the different care with the lighting, especially Sponge filter is a sponge filter, but all the lighting has changed. Yep. And it's just incredible. Just incredible. How many isopod bins are you maintaining right now? Oh, my gosh. I would, ha I mean, I'd have to count, but I, um, it's got to be 30, let's say, maybe about. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not your collection, <laughs> but yeah. 30 is a lot. 30 is a handful. Yeah. So when we're talking about more than a couple, more than five or six, more than 10, when we're talking 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 or whatever, the, <clears throat> the biggest fear that we have is, well, probably the biggest fear is something mm -hmm. going wrong, like the heat in the room, you know, drastically changing, something like that. Mm -hmm. The second biggest fear is obviously, you know, now that we're more aware of the requirements and you know, the, the ramifications, the, the second biggest fear is obviously having somebody knock on your door. Tell us a little bit about how you prepared for that, knowing that somebody could come in and do an inspection. Tell us how you prepared, not for the inspection, but started preparing with permits and just getting yourself ready because you're shipping isopods as well. We talked about that just before the show. Tell us about how you prepared all of that. So, um, you know, I began with uh, the USDA permit, um, and thank you very much for your video, <laughs> because I was overwhelmed the first time I, I went to it, and I think that video dropped, like, the day that I decided to do it. So, I mean, it was perfect timing, um, and Carlos over at, at um, USDA had said he'll walk me through it. And then when he got my first copy, he was like, I don't know how you did that. And I said, Wally Kern. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I started with that um, and I got that into place. And then I don't remember what it was that made me think, you know, maybe it's just because I worked in law offices so many years. I thought to myself, I wonder if there's a California permit, right? And California does have stricter laws than a lot of states. We're like Florida, we're like Hawaii. Um, and so, you know, for example, we still can't have ferrets in California. Uh, there's a lot of agricultural laws. So I emailed, I, I went on their website and I couldn't find anything. And I emailed them directly and I said, do you need a permit to, to, to sell isopods or to ship isopods within the state of California? Um, and they replied immediately, yes. And I said, is it the same approved isopod list as the USDA? And they said, yes. And then they wrote back, wait a minute. <laughs> Like, what isopods are you, you know, are you talking about selling or shipping in the state of California? So then um, I started bombarding them. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I started sending them like chunks of 10 at a time. And they would respond, you know, within a day or two. Uh, there was an entomologist he was speaking to. And he would say, this is okay. This is not okay. This is okay. 
they didn't give me any reasoning why one was okay versus another. They just said yes or no. Um, most specifically, um, anything that, like, for example, Cubaris, if it was an SP, they wouldn't accept it. Um, they needed to know, like, what the, the full species was. I know. That was, that was a hard oh. one. That was a hard one. And um, uh, what was I going to say about that? So once we had that list, um, I printed it all out. I actually put it here. I think this is one that I sent to you. And it's a long list. I mean, it's four pages of, I'll, I'll attach it later to like the species, exactly how it's going to be shipped, what it's going to be shipped in. Um, the substrate, they approved all of that right away. Um, and then, this was quite some time ago. And then, you know, I think maybe four or five days before the inspection, I got an email. Hello, I'm coming to inspect your facility. Next oh, no. Pick Tuesday or Thursday. And I said, let's do Thursday. You know, um, when I first... Um, got the email, you know, kind of my heart went into my throat and I said, oh my gosh, I know that I do some things here that probably are not up to snuff. Um, so I went back in and I made a lot of bin changes. Um, for example, I guess I can admit this. <laughs> I can admit this to you. Sometimes I'm like, hey, the fungus gnats are going to get in anyways. It's a deep bin. I'm just going to drill holes and not worry about any kind of mesh covering. So that was one of the things that I went in and I covered it, um, the holes with mesh. So if I had a vent, I just let it stay. Um, the ones that were just open holes, I covered them with mesh. Um, they looked at that. So I was really glad that I did. Um, you know, I just tidied everything up. I got like all of the stuff that I shipped because she said to me, we're going to be particularly interested in your shipping methods. Okay. So I went to my living room table. I put out everything that I ship with like in a little show and tell. <laughs> um, and then, um, and this is, this is the fun part of the story. And right as all of this is happening, my house got attacked by killer ants. Oh no, oh no. And, and when I mean killer ants, I mean they killed two mantis. Oh. They killed, they kill isopods on a regular basis. They kill froglets. Mm -hmm. They, it's, I've never seen anything like, they're not fire ants. They're not fire ants. These are just Argentine ants. They're an invasive species. So, I mean, when she arrived, I said, um, I really get your point about invasive species because I'm <laughs> in, in my house right now that I can't get rid of. And it's, it's really it's kind of scary. Um, she arrived exactly on time. Um, the door knocked, she came in, she was very business. So she had a whole checklist um, that like, that I'm happy to share with anybody that um, sends it to me. I had it open on my screen a minute ago. Um, but mostly it went down. How are they shipped? How are they packed? What do they look like? Um, are the isopods in escape proof bins? Um, is the room escape proof, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay. Um, and then, um, she, she really liked the way I kept my dwarf white. So most of my <laughs> pods are kept in sterilite bins. Um, you know, with the, the locking handles and then either just like a, like a hole vent or holes drilled in with screen over it. My dwarf whites are kept in those like disposable, um, Tupperware, right? So we have like a large one, just pinprick holes, um, around the sides, just pinpricked holes. Um, and it's all, I mean, other than those little tiny holes, that bin is almost completely sealed. Um, awesome. it keeps it humid though. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it humid. It keeps them from getting out. They are in an entirely different room. Um, along with my, my prunosis, 
in my guest bathroom. So that's fun for my guests. <laughs> I want it on like a little shelf. I mean, if you don't know what it is, you don't know. Yeah. But um, one of the things that she was concerned about that she asked about was door sweeps. So really? I have, yes. So both of my rooms, my isopod room and the bathroom that they're kept in, it's really inexpensive. I got it on Amazon. It's like a rubber strip mm -hmm. that attaches to the door. You cut it to fit your door side, put a couple of nails in it. So when you open and close the door, there's a seal. So for everybody living in the north, um, certainly yeah. not California, but everybody living in the north, we live by that. You know, the very first yeah. thing that we do in the fall is look for the weather weather stripping or the uh, socks that you put at the bottom of yeah. to try to uh, eliminate as many draft like a draft water. Exactly. Yeah. So that's an excellent point. That's something that if if you're not in the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field land and you're uh, not thinking about that, that's pretty dramatic to have these these door sweeps to prevent something like that happening. Yeah. So a, a couple of the things <clears throat> that um, I had gotten ideas from is I had talked to Carlos at the USDA at some point um, about what the rules for a containment facility were. And so he gave me something to read that was arthropod based. And he said that there really wasn't a crustacean based one. Um, and so I looked at it and I said, Oh, I'm not going to be able to meet those conditions in my house. And he said, you'd be surprised. We'll come out and work with you. Right. So I, I never took him up on that um, right. just because, you know, I'm just a, a small kind of hobby breeder. But um, one of the things that, other than the draft blockers that I just mentioned, one of the other things that was a big ticket item for them was to close your vents in the ceiling or floor if you have them and then cover it with a magnet. So um, when the California inspector came out, she said, where's your magnet? And I said, it's right here, but I haven't put it up yet. I just wanted to confirm that that was something you wanted me to do as well. And they said, yes. So from a facility standpoint, we have the door sweeps, the, the uh, stoppers on the doors. We have ventilation being covered. Were yes. there any other facility specific gotchas? I mean, it sounds like you were very prepared, mm -hmm. but for somebody that that's just starting this whole process, door sweeps, ventilation covers, anything else from a facility standpoint? Um, I'm not sure if this was specified. I'll, I'll have to look it up in the documentation, but mine are actually in a closet. So the closet door is usually open. Um, it's like a sliding closet. Door. Mm -hmm. Um, she liked that because it could be closed if necessary. Um, like I said, it's usually open cause I'm usually gazing at the beauty of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'll have to think about that. I don't think there was anything extra special um although maybe um the dwarf whites and the prunos is being completely in a different room very isolated yeah. and the other thing that she did <laughs> like about where they were not the room specifically is that that's a tile floor and it's unlikely that a dwarf white will live long on a cold tile floor okay oh. yeah. gotcha yeah. good point were there any concerns about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, bad throat right now. Um, were there any concerns, you know, keeping fish, um, I'm going to relate it to fish, taking a net from one tank to another, transporting anything. Was there any concerns from an isopod perspective of maybe going in, working with tools or a body where, you know, uh, sweaters and then tra potentially transporting isopods out of the room? Was she, anything she didn't bring up anything as far as like gloves or anything like that. She did ask me where I prepared my shipments and I told her I prepared them in that room um, so that I'm not carrying the isopods out to my kitchen or my living room while I prepare them. Or at least I, they're already in their container before they leave the room. And that is true. I don't take the bins out of the room mm -mm. ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I do... 
And um, the other thing is, is she really wanted to see my freezer. So now we're getting into, yeah. we're kind of, I've got, I have four different areas, facility, isopod enclosure, shipping process, and disposal. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, no, this is perfect. This is a good, great segue. Let's talk about disposal. Okay. So she was really, you know, that was super high on her list of, I want to see how you're disposing. Yep. Please. And so she said, um, is it in the home? And I said, no, it's in my garage. So it's a chest freezer. Um, so I, I was just lucky. I actually had some soil in there that was in a plastic bag, um, that was being frozen at the time. And that actually is a requirement under, under California law. So I don't know what USDA is, but California is you specifically have to put things in plastic bags before they go into the freezer. So I couldn't just throw a bin in or throw in like a tub of isopods. It's got to go into a plastic bag. Perfect. So yeah, I opened it up and there was like three plastic bags in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And she did ask like, where, when I clean out a bin, how do I clean it out? Where do I store that bin? And, you know, it is in my garage. Um, and so I showed her that area, you know, where bins get cleaned out and they get stacked, it, it, you know, if they're going to be used again, they'll be in that stack. Um, and she did, we did open a lot of bins. I mean, she did open them, want me to open them so she could look inside to see how the isopods were being kept. I'm going to jump back before we get into the isopod enclosures. I want to jump back to the disposal. Um, I think you and I talked about three days. I don't know for Apis, um, if there's a number of days, you know, that you have to keep them frozen. What's that? I think, hold on a second. I, look at me. I'm so prepared. I have it here. So here's the Apis that we have to send out with the shipments. Um, and I think it is, yeah. Oh, it is plastic bags. Okay. So it's the same for um, Apis. Three okay. days before disposing them in your regular trash. So three days. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and I think, you know, again, we talked before and we usually keep them for a couple of weeks simply because I forget about them being in there and, yeah, oh yep. my God, I better grab them. Um, great information, especially the cleaning of the bin. So I'm going to stress this so much. If somebody's watching this and they're thinking about selling, they're thinking they're buying isopods even, you need to know this stuff, especially if you're selling, especially if you're shipping. And what I would suggest to everybody, and I'm, I'm going to do it after this as well, is come up with a checklist and just kind of, you know, how do you um, how do you clean your bins? How do you ship? Do you transfer? Just go through the details like Jennifer is talking about here and just make sure that you're covered on all this. This is great, great, yeah. very important information. So with the, you know, with the bins, um, when I clean them, I, I usually... So I'll take all the soil out um, and put it in a plastic bag and freeze that. And then just because I have like a wildlife rehab background, um, I probably go a little extra mile. So maybe I'll use like a 1% to 5% bleach solution that I'll soak in or a Nolva sand soak because I like the smell of Nolva sand better than, than bleach. Um, I'll let it soak for that and then I'll rinse it out really heavy and then I'll clean it and stack it. Um, that's just something I learned at wildlife rehab. Um, so I'll usually do that. Um, but I, I don't freeze the actual bin. I tried that one time and I cracked the bin. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like that would take up a lot of space. In yeah. a freezer. Um, that's great information. We usually, I'll, I'll say that we're not that thorough. We should be, and, and I'll change some of the things that we're doing, but for dwarf whites, we generally release a thermal nuclear explosion to kind of try to, you know, make sure that we don't carry them anywhere. <laughs> I know. I know they're they're. I mean, they're so cute. They, they, they are. Just are, but and I'm lucky that I've only found one stray one. And I'm like, how did you even get here? Like, and um, she did ask about escapees. You know, have okay. you had any escapees? And I'm like, one. And it was a dwarf white. Wow. Um, yeah. So she did ask about that. Um, what else did she, was she specifically asking about? 
I think that's it as far as like the bins and the freezing. Oh, everything's going out. We just lost our, our fish room lights. Everything goes off at seven o'clock. Oh, oh, I thought it was like a blackout. No. <laughs> but the, no. you know, a, I would say that 60 to 70% of the weight was on how I ship things. Um, before we cover that, um, if anybody has any questions about, you know, disposal, about the facility, and now we're getting into the shipping, and we <coughs> talked a little bit about the isopod enclosures, and then that, you know, this is right down your alley, especially the shipping process, which we're going to get into in a second. But from an isopod enclosure standpoint, you talked about the mesh, but you also talked about vents. How, how fine is the mesh on the vents? Is it escape proof like the the mesh that you would use so were, were any concerns about the size of the holes in the the vents at all and the reason that, that she did not is that i tend to use deep bins okay um so my bins are usually a little higher i do have a lot of airspace so you know maybe six I'm like four six inches of airspace there so that they don't really can't climb up to those vents um, and then I'll also put the vents sometimes like um, for the species that like more air, like the Bolivari, I'll put them in the lid as well. Um, the things like the, so originally I used to use like screen, mesh screen that you get at Home Depot. That's like for windows, window screen. Yep. Um, for some species, that looks a little wide to me. And so in a lower bin, I put more of like a chiffon covering over it. Again, I don't tend to do that because my bins are so high, but I knew that it was probably going to be a requirement on their part. Um, so I went ahead and did I'm, I'm actually glad that I did. Um, I grumbled about it because it was a lot of work because I had to like, set up a new bin, drill new holes, put the mesh on, transfer everybody over again. Can you shift it on as a vent cover or does it need to be mesh? I, I, I mean, I think it depends. I think it really depends on um, how you're using the vent, how big the vent is, how small the babies are that could get out of that vent. Um, they don't tend to climb, but every once in a while you'll get like a rogue stick or twig that props up. And if you've got an armadillidium that's tiny, these vents, they could go right out them. Yes. I found a, a situation with magic potions once where I had a small tear in one of my mesh and I literally had probably 20 babies on the tub uh, right under it. Yeah. Uh, we've used chiffon. I had to take out of my personal supply of chiffon. <laughs> um, I've used um, the bags that the snakes. Pink. Yeah, the pink, my <laughs> pink chiffon. Your pink chiffon. Um, I've what? used the snake. <laughs> <laughs> I've used snake bags. I've used mealworm bags, uh, the bags that mealworms come in. He and, throws nothing out. Yeah, and, and I've used uh, cheesecloth. I was going to say yeah. Yeah, I found cheesecloth to be a little bit restricting, oh, okay. but and it's harder to work with. So the chiffon, uh, the bags from mealworms and snakes works, I think, perfect. But yeah, you know, it mm -hmm. all depends. Like you said, it depends on the species. They're not snake bags because we don't have snakes. Don't yeah. say that. Right, right, right. <laughs> it it's the same. Wonder what it's the same in. bag. Yeah. You know the, the the little bags too that you use to put like filter media into. Those are mm -hmm. a good texture. Um, again, um, I'm glad that I did it. Um, but really having a deeper bin, if you've got the shelf space for it. It just makes everything so much easier. It's 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 much harder for them to climb out of something like that. I'm sure some prunosis somewhere could like build a bridge with their body and climb out, but they stack yeah. on top of each yeah, they other. They stack on top of each other and they climb out. <laughs> We're getting out of here. <laughs> um, shipping process. This is the big one. I mean, this is the one that everybody thinks of. They, I don't think people uh, go right to the facility points that you've made. I don't think people, I, I think people think about the venting and the, the mesh and everything and escapees and, but shipping is the one that I think concerns people the most. And I don't think anybody thinks about disposal. Maybe a lot, maybe they yeah. do, but the shipping process, that's the big one. 
How did you prepare before the inspection? How did you know what information to to gather and do your shipments? You know, what did you, how did you determine what needs to be included? You know, I, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, <laughs> honestly, because I, I didn't know where to begin. Um, I can remember sending out my first shipment of isopods and I literally was having a panic attack about, are they going to break open? Are they going to do, you know, what's going to happen? Are they going to die? Um, so I think I, I probably overdid it a little bit. Um, you know, I, I don't tend to send out massive orders of things so I can use the smaller boxes like a six by six or an eight by eight. Um, they're all, um, uh, insulated with the foam insulation. Um, and then these, so we were just actually talking about this. Might as well just, oh, there you go here. So I got these on Amazon. These are the ones that when you pop on the lid the first time, there's a little lock, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And then to get, yep. open it, you need to flip it open and break off this little piece right here. Yep. She loved these. Um, you know, versus like I showed her the the taller, deeper deli cup where I have to tape the top on. And honestly, that makes me a little nervous too. So if you have like a manageable number, I mean, I put 25 Dairy Cow in here and they were still okay. Oh, nice. Okay. These are the ones from me. Um, and then, you know, it was sphagnum versus dirt and sphagnum versus, um, you know, just dirt for the dwarf species. Um, you can't see, but there are little teeny tiny print, pinprick holes here. Yes. Um, I don't tend to put them on the side because there's usually going to be tape over them anyway. Um, sometimes I even do tape down these sides a little bit more because, again, I'm just paranoid. Um, one point that she brought up, I just fed them when they arrived after months, is um, no food. So no food when you ship them. Really? Oh, it attracts oh attract pests. Say yeah. that again. I'm sorry, Jennifer. Because it can attract pests. The so they, yeah, they they don't want um, there to be like um, fresh food in a bin because it might attract ants or whatever it is they oh. think it might be attracting. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a new one to me. That's a big oh. one for us because we always put a piece of carrot or a piece of, you know, zucchini squash, squash or yes. zucchini or, yes. it or something and just to maintain moisture and give them something yes. that just in case like your shipment of May that was never claimed and came back to you and they're all still alive, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, just in case we like to have some kind of, you know, nutrition in there just to, to hold them over. But this well, is a big one. Wow. That's a big one. And actually, I had not um, for the this shipment, actually. But what I have been doing in place of food is I've been sending them with a little bit of cuddle bone and a little pit, a little bit of the horticultural charcoal because they love that. Um, and so usually they'll be able to munch on that a little bit. Hopefully UPS doesn't lose your package like they did last week in triple digits. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be there like on the second and it just got there yesterday. Mm. And they're oh. alive. They were alive. Those were magic questions. Unbelievable. From here to Tennessee in, in 100 degrees plus. I mean, when they left here, it was 79, but was supposed to get there in three days. Wow. Um, so... And also the other thing that I like about these is if you're using a six by six by six, these fit in perfectly. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. you know, yeah. if you try to put in like a larger deli cup or you try to put in, um, you know, like I have the ones that are kind of, I think they're sandwich ones that you get like at smart and final and they fold over. Yeah. Um, they're not going to fit in there. And yeah. so these fit perfectly. They're a little pricier for sure, but um, I haven't, I'm going to research a little wholesale on this, see if I can find them for less. Uh, um, excuse me. We're using, I'll just mention real quick, we're using a lock kind of a, I don't want to call it a deli cup. It's a flip one. lid. Yeah, if we had one. Yeah, I think you, You're familiar with that, a flip lid, but when you close it, it locks. Yeah. So we're yeah. afraid. We take these to shows where, and somebody will, 
you know, ultimately say, can I take a look at these files? Well, I'm so afraid somebody's going to pick it up and want to open it and go like this, and it's going to be all over the table and on the floor. Oh, it's that's really hard to open. Point. That's a good point because I was thinking about taking those to my first show. <laughs> I like don't let them open them. Yeah, I like <clears> that <throat> cup and. You know, maybe deli cups wouldn't be too bad as long as, you know, you're controlling, you're putting them on the table, they're they're getting them and taking them with them. But uh, it's all balance, you know, it's all balancing it, but great information. I like those cups as well. Um, what else did they say about the container, about the box? We're going to get into paperwork in, if yeah. you don't in just a second, but the container and the box, what else, any other suggestions from that? Um, so... Sturdy box, um, which it was, I get them from Box City, so they're kind of made for shipping. Um, insulation, I'm looking over to see if I have one over there. I don't. Um, uh, all of the information that goes in the box. Um, so the APHIS one, and um, I send an APHIS one, and then for California, California has its own sheet. So yes, you have to send a separate one if it's going to California as well with your permit number on the sheet. Um, that, and then I send a, I send a little hair sheet on the, on each one. And then I send a ridiculously difficult to figure out dead on arrival form wow. where they actually have to like, Put the isopod in the center next to my writing. And <laughs> so that's just my own silliness. No, uh, no, no. Yeah. No, no holes in the sides of the box. Uh, yes. People do that. Yeah. yeah. No oh. holes in the sides. Nothing frustrates me, Jennifer, than to get a message from a, co it, it, I shouldn't say frustrates, but it's, it's an education. It's a part of the education. A customer getting a box. Now we ship geckos for 20 years, 20. and somebody getting a box and saying, "Hey, you don't have ventilation holes on the sides, and it's 90 degrees out. Why don't?" And we've got it insulated in a cool pack and a cryo pack, and yeah. you don't have ventilation holes for them to breathe. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. So it's all education. No holes in the boxes. No, no holes. In the boxes. Boxes. No yeah. holes. I think that's actually part of um, the permit. So I think you're right. Yeah. On the permit, at least the California, um, it had to say what host material will accompany the pest. So I had to say, and I think this was, I was joking about this with you where it's, it says no ventilation holes, mm -hmm. in prick holes only. Mm -hmm. So that is a condition actually of my permit. Um, and then let's see. So the other thing about the box is that, um, you know, cold pack, heat pack, depending on time of year, you know, she asked all the things, you know, how do you keep it? I said, well, I put it in a plastic bag and I wrap it in newspaper and then I tape it to the top. And I mean, she did ask questions like that and she would just sort of check it off on her list. And then, the new thing for them is that um, I have a label that I stick to the outside, which is in compliance with the Lacey Act. You can see that oh. right? So on the outside of the box, it'll have the common name, the scientific name, about how many are in the box. And I used to just have the USDA permit number applicable to the state where I was sending it. And she said, I want you to include your California permit number as well, so that if they get it at a post office and they have questions, or it's like on its way to Washington State and it stops in Northern California and they say, hey, what's this? They'll see your California permit number on the box. Great um, information. So I'm going to... to bring up a point that you made earlier because it's so, so very important. You talked about the ants and the evasiveness of the ants. The reason, folks, that we're talking about this, and, and when I did the video on the permits, I got probably a dozen people messaging me and saying, oh, you're bringing light to something that's not needed. Don't talk about it because we'll have more inspection. And my point is it's already out there. Yeah. It's already out there. It's not that hard to... to 
comply and follow, you know, along. So why shouldn't we? But the important thing is we should do that because the criticality of these invasive species. And just like that, we could have something somewhere that shouldn't be there. So we, we, we really have to follow this, folks. We really do. Yeah. It's not just, you know, oh, it's written down somewhere and it's government control. It's there's a reason. There really yeah. is a reason. Uh, you were talking you were talking about the, the foods in the cups. And the first thought that I that came to my mind was we used to travel to Canada all the time. The very first question that they would ask is not. Um, you know, are you carrying in, are you carrying out cigars or illegal liquor? It was always, do you have potatoes? Potatoes. Yeah. potatoes, potatoes and yeah. and do you have any <clears throat> dirt with your worms? And potatoes. Yeah. Peanuts. Yep. And peanuts. So it was very specific to things that they already know there's a problem with. So there's, folks, there's really reasons that these rules are out there and there's really reasons that we should be following this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. Um, it's fine. The, there's another one that I just wanted to, as you were talking, it reminded me of something because the first time I read it, I had to go back to Carlos at the USDA and say, am I reading this correctly? So um, the U, uh, USDA APHIS requires that you send this out with your shipments, right? But if you read it, it also requires that you send out the exact same language on a different form with your name on it. So, or something to that effect, which is why when I started my care sheets, it's also on the back. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We're going to watch. We're going to, yeah, I've got to, I got to rewatch this. Yeah. yeah. So and I, I said to him, did I read that right? Because that, seems redundant he said nope i want something coming from us i want something coming from you i said okay gotcha now i'm gonna to have to go back to my correspondence with carlos because i think that i asked that question i think i was very specific do you mean two copies and here's an i'm gonna get back on my soapbox <laughs> jennifer is right on with this information hopefully i'm right on with the the information i've shared but Ultimately, Jennifer, Jennifer, nor uh, us, Supreme Gecko, are the rule setters. Right. Don't don't say, oh, well, Jennifer said or Wally yeah. said and Nanette yeah. said. You better talk to Carlos. You better read the rules. You better follow because if if you know if somebody comes to me and says, well, I I used you as an example, I'm going to go. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Mm -mm. It's it's everybody's responsibility to keep up with these, and this is great information. So. I yeah, what Carlo said one copy would be sufficient. But yeah, I'll, I'll even find our conversation and and share it with you because I I mean it, it kind of stumped me and I think I asked him like twice like am I am I reading this right? Yeah. Um, and the the other thing that um I kind of wanted to say is that you know on my inspection sheet um, that she filled out. It does indicate there, and I'd never seen this before, standard permit, right? So this is the permit that I have um, under the California rules. I'm sure that there are different levels of permits um, for other people. So what is going to apply to me and my situation may not be the same for someone um, else. You know, I know a lot of the large breeders have what would classify as a containment facility and they do have a different set of rules and a different set of um, isopods that they can keep. I, I do want to mention here, um, you know, I felt like I have an inspector coming in my house. Let's be honest. I said, you know, before I, I'm sorry, I dropped something. Before I knew any of this, I had these Cubaras. <laughs> here they are right here. I said, um, I didn't know. I won't sell them. Um, but they are, you know, my somewhat beloved pets. Cubars are not high on my list. Um, <laughs> and so she said, I will speak to our senior entomologist and they will tell me um, what needs to be done. 
Okay. Um, so that was a little bit of a nail biter. And um, when they came back, they said, no, like your facility passed, you're doing a great job. You may keep those species, uh, but you may not distribute them. Fair enough. Well, I mean, fair enough. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, back to what I just said. You know, it works for Jennifer. Thank goodness it does. But everybody's going to be different. And especially, especially, you know, if, obviously, if you're in California, Florida, Hawaii. Right. I, but don't assume that, oh, I'm not, so I'm okay. You know, just really read up on, on the information. Um, so it sounds like, you know, you're... You have all your ducks in a row. You all have all of your rubber duckies in a row. You have all your ducks in, uh, in, in a row with the paperwork. When they took a look at the paperwork, did they go, oh, well, cool. This is all in order. And So so what was interesting is so I, funny enough, I have never shipped isopods to California. I ship them lots of other places, but I've never shipped them in California. Um the second part of that is that um, if I attend a show, I have to hand out the California permit information. My permit needs to be on display for anybody that wants to look at it. And I need to, uh, I don't know if it needs to be on display, but it needs to be available. Um, yeah. okay. And I need to hand out my California, well, excuse me, my California um, permit to people that buy isopods from me. So that they have that information too. Perfect. And I think that, that's smart because I do think a lot of um, people that you know are not really in the isopod hobby, but they think like, "What a cool pet!" and they're going to get some gestroy and they're going to say, "Well, I mean, it looks just like a roly poly, but cooler and bigger and yellower." Uh -huh. uh, they're my second favorite. <laughs> um, you know, they might just release them out into their backyard, and and we don't know what that we don't know what that would do. We don't. We don't know, you know, again, you know, what that species might do. We don't know how that could maybe interbreed or yeah. decimate the, the existing. We just don't know. And it sounds like, you know, oh, I have a bin of, you know, whatever, uh, powder blues. How can that hurt anything? But, you know, we just have to play by the rules. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How were they? Here's a really, and I think I know this answer already, but. Let's say they're going through all of this information and you don't have the door sweeps, uh, although I think you did. Yeah. Was there a point where they went, where she went, oh, you're not doing this right? Was it like hammered down or was it like, you know, you should do this. I'm going to, I don't want to say let it slide, but you're okay with, the, you know, you're, the intent is there. Your intent is there. Here's what you need to change. So the only thing that she needed to check on is she needed to check with the senior entomologist about the magnet that goes over the vent. Okay. Um, but she said that I was going to be in compliance. Um, what she felt was a compliance. Um, I, I didn't get the report back for a couple of days. They do have a list um, at the bottom, a checkbox where it's either 100% compliant, not 100%, but the isopods are contained like that was a that was specific um and then there was not compliant at all setting a date for re-examination and uh -huh. then there, there was recommendations for this facility should not be able to operate wow yeah wow. yeah so were you just straight down the line spot on it sounds like you were so was there anything that you that they recommended and you said that there was a file uh, or you got the form a couple of days later. Was it yeah. like, you know, a plus plus? Pretty much. I mean, Good. pretty much. she did say, she did say <laughs> separately. No, I mean, at the bottom of the form that they want me to put the magnet up over okay. the, which is fine. I got gotcha. um, you. You know, at first I was a little petrified, um, especially about the mesh, which I fixed. Um, but she was very helpful. I mean, she was very helpful and um, the questions that she asked were good, right? And, you know, we even brainstormed stuff together like um, like this. So my original cute little isopod thing only had the APHIS number on it. And I said, 
you know, what do you think? Do you think it should have California? And she went, yeah, you know what? I think it really should because if it gets caught up in a California post office and that inspector decides they want to open the box, what's in the box? I'm sorry. I had to do that. <laughs> you um, when you say that. You have exactly. to. <laughs> um, th then they'll have my permit number right there. Did you create that label yourself or was I it? Did. You did. Okay. Isn't it cute? It, it looks nice. nice. I can't read the whole thing, but yeah. Oh yes. One other thing I, I did forget. Um, I do have a live animal sticker that goes on the box. Yeah. She wanted yeah, to do that too. And we get questioned a lot at the post office when we go in, are you sure you shouldn't have holes in here? How do they breathe? I'm like, they're fine. Just leave it alone. <laughs> I don't know if Andrew from DEA Exotics is still on, but he and I have had lots of conversations about this throughout the process, especially with him considering moving in that direction and us, you know, selling for the last three years or so. And especially it shows. And I'll be the first to admit, oh, gosh, that's right. Uh, Armadillidium granulatum isn't on the list. I shouldn't be selling this. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't have it on the store to be shipping it. So, you know, it's adjustments. It's And it sounds like she was very fair and willing to work. And that's ultimately the point that I was trying to get to before and not saying it the right way. It sounds like she was very, very willing to, you know, if you had, you know, hands of isopods open to air, she'd probably kind of hit you on that. But it sounds like you had, you know, everything right in order. And it sounds yeah. like she was like, yeah, here you might want to. You here's something you could do, and very willing and open to to talk about it and make adjustments. So that's really really cool, and that's what it's all about. We need to just keep improving, right? And and you know, one of the things that um, I had, you know, we a lot of it was just kind of banter back and forth. And at one point, she said like something to the effect of, and I don't I don't want to be quoted on this because. It went by my ass, but she said, you know, if, if there's a species that you think should be on here, like, we'll talk about it. And I was like, does she mean that I can sell spatulatas in California? I mean, who knows? I, I don't know. Um, because I was confused by, um, you know, what species are a flat out no that seemed very similar, but I, I, I was talking to someone who knows a little bit more about importing, exporting than I do. And they said, it's probably the area of the world that they come in from. Okay. okay. Right. So uh, a flat isopod from Greece is different than a flat isopod from Spain. Makes all the sense in the world. And I, I, said, oh, I wouldn't have even thought about that. I was the same way with, again, go, going back to armadillidium granulatum. I was like, why would they not have that on the list where they have other armadillidiums? Um, but, you know, they're doing the research. And, and unless I want to invest, you know, hours and hours and hours into under, trying to understand stuff like that. And I, I wouldn't mind it if somebody explained it to me. But um, I don't think it's, you know, out there. I, I And I don't want to go to Carlos with, you know, questions like that. I want more compliant kind of questions. But... Um, it sounds like they're very willing to listen and, you know, take in suggestions mm -hmm. and maybe potentially make accommodations or at least um, additions to, yeah. to what they're looking for. So that's cool. Yeah. I mean, she, she was nice. And, you know, um, I emailed back and forth with her a couple of times since then. So it's nice to, again, same thing with Carlos. You're like, um, yeah, California does. We have, we do have some really strict laws here, um, especially when it comes to agriculture, just because we have so much of it here. It's one of the reasons we can't have ferrets Yes. Um, because we have a lot of like chicken ranches and ferrets would be like, oh yeah, game on. Yeah. Uh, they are here, but they <laughs> are illegal. Um, but lots of people will drive out of state and, and bring them in. Um, but again, there's reasons why we can't have them. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. And, and just bugs, we were talking about that before. And and Chris Biggs mentioned, you know, uh, Canada mm -hmm. being stricter. And, and we had talked about that like minutes before Chris joined the conversation. Um, 
it is what it is. And there's reasons for that. Uh, we just need to understand and, you know, make sure that we're compliant with that. Oh, yeah. Canada can't have dubia roaches, right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Who can't? Uh, Canada can't oh, have okay. dubia roaches. Um, I have a couple of questions. When you pack your isopods, where are you packing them? You said that you don't move the container to get them prepared, but where do you actually do your packing then? So I have a room that functions as my frog isopod room. Uh, okay. It's, it's you know, at the other end of the house, that's the one with the door sweep on it, all the things. I have a little table in there that I will actually put the bin, pack the isopods. But once they're in their bin, I'll take them out to the living room and, okay. you know, pack them there. Box them up so, and label. And Did she yeah, ask any yeah. of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. She was okay with you moving them once they were yeah. packed in their little container. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking of our setup and I'm like, oh my. <laughs> now that you've now that you've created the shipping station <laughs> up in the playroom or the uh dining yeah. room. Right next to the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> she just doesn't want us like running with bins from like open bins, yeah. Know, yeah, open bins. Perfect. Perfect. And then like leaving there and forgetting that the bins open, not that we would do anything right. like that. How long was she there? Oh she was here like a full out full hour. Okay. She was I Oh. I thought it was interesting that you had notification because when I saw it, Wally told me we were having, you know, we were doing this tonight and this the topic and everything, but I didn't have any of the background. So I've learned it all tonight through you. But I thought it was interesting that they notified you ahead of time when you had the surprise on your thumbnail. I'm thinking, was, man, they're knocking on the door at any time. Yeah, it was fast though. It was yeah. like she sent me an email on Friday and said, I've got time on Tuesday and Thursday, you pick. Um, so it was like, so quick, yeah. Quick. and I mean, I still wanted to get in there and clean the shelves, make the room right. look nicer, you know, just yep. so time enough to make some small, I don't even want to say modifications, but kind of touch up, kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, do some dusting and vacuuming, uh, before the guests show up, but nothing yeah. like. Oh my gosh, I better change out all of my bins because I don't have mesh on the ventilation kind of time. I had to I had to do that with two or three bins because again, I had the high up holes and it it makes a lot of sense to me, but um I had known from, you know, the document that Carlos sent me about the containment facility that that would not have flown. Um so I figured, you know, do it now. So that you'll be compliant when she's there so that you don't have to have her come back again. Because I didn't know at that point, you know, is this going to be easy? Is this going to be hard? Is this going to be scary? Um, what so a great point. Try to eliminate any reasons whatsoever to say, yes. oh, check mark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she did. She had a big clipboard, too. And she would, like, write something down. And I was like, what are you writing down? <laughs> um the other thing that was very uh, interesting, so um, I keep, I'm old school and I just have this big folder um, where I write down notes, um, not, a, you know, not, not a, entirely so. I can't write down every time a dairy cow dies. I mean, but I will write if there's death in, in the bin, if I, I see stuff or if I see mites or um, if I sell them to somebody, I'll write in there, you know, 12 one out. Um, you know, and if I sell them on something like eBay, then I have a record. And she asked if I sold them to people in person. And I said, yes. And I said, it's going to be really hard to ask somebody that found me on Craigslist who comes to pay me cash for their address. Um, she was sympathetic towards that. She was like, I understand, you know, that's, I mean, people aren't going to really do that, but you are required to have them this. So, so here's my, my point with that is that we have all of our records in our store. You know, we have an application that goes through yeah. and records and saves and blah, blah, blah. So we can go back to anything that we sell online at a show. So I, yeah. can I ask how many count you have in the dairy cows? Well, there's, 10, sometimes 12 to 13. Okay, I'd like to buy some. Okay, great, but I need your name, address, phone number, social security name, 
I, I'm not going to do that as a seller. I'm not going to stop yeah. the seller and ask for personal information. I might say, and we do this, are you in Wisconsin? Are you in Wisconsin? Uh, yeah. No, I'm in Illinois. Okay. Now, you know, we kind of take a, 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 you know, a different fork in the road, but um, boy, to, to stop a sale at a show, especially when you have 14 other customers at your table, oh, it's not going to have a biggie. Yeah. And then, like I said, she was actually really sympathetic to that. She's like, yeah, nobody's going to do that, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, so that's definitely going out. And that was another thing. Like she said, Oh, why don't they put your permit on there for you? And I'm like, so I have little stickers now that have my permit number. And this again, is their official form. My permit number needs to be somewhere on that form. Yeah. This is for the California department of food and agriculture, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We don't have yep. to have that. No, no, okay. no. Yeah, um, I'm starting to great information. <laughs> are you so you haven't done a show yet? You're going to do your first show. Are there things oh that you're kind of thinking about what you need to do for the show? You know, oh my gosh, yeah, I have to not throw up. Um, I just, I, you know, I am, uh, I'm very chatty, so I think people get the idea that I'm very extroverted. I'm extremely introverted. Um, I have a docent background, so I do like to talk to people about animals. I probably over talked to people about animals. Um, so I'm going to enjoy that part of things. I don't like you at all. Yeah, we're, uh, we're samies on that. Yeah, but you know, the whole, like, I just, so this weekend is the Reptile Super Show, um, which is which is one of the biggest shows in the country here in Los Angeles. And there was a there was an option of doing this show or doing Repticon, which is much smaller. And I said, I can't do Reptile Super Show. I'm gonna get like these big breeders like walking past me, going, "Who are you?" Um, and so, um, you know, I I have so many questions. That's why I'm gonna buy you a coffee. <laughs> um, it would be my pleasure. To help you. From working square on your phone like again i i use square for my business mm -hmm. but i don't really take any in-person payments um you made such a good point i mean i think it just changed my whole direction of of i was going to use those snap closed um bins at the show and you know i'm the person that will open it and spill it everywhere um what I saw one vendor do, um, and while I liked the idea, I, I didn't so much like the entire presentation, but he had like a translucent box and it, it almost looked like a fishing tackle box. Okay. And, you know, each pod would be in a different box. What's okay. in the box? I'm sorry, I can't stop. <laughs> What's in the box? So that people could pick it up it all the time and look at like six different isopods, you know, in the box and they could say like, I love these clowns. And then he would give them the clown. So it wasn't, but, but what, what made me nervous about it? I mean, it, it was a translucent box with pods in it. So there was no substrate of any kind. Mm. Um, and so when I was looking at it, I thought, great idea. How can I, how can I do that better? Or, you know, do you just say, here, let me open that for you? That's um, what I do at the I show. Open. I offer to yeah. open them. And I pretty much, most of the people don't have a problem with that. And yeah. I just tell them if they want to see it, I'll do it. Because we did have a lady do that to me, I don't know, last fall. And it was springtails because she wanted to see them. Oh, no. And I had springtails all over the table all, all day. I was oh, just no. going crazy. Yeah. Mm -mm. I, I think, and we've gone back. It's like every other show we go, okay, this isn't working. What do we do next? Um, we've gone from little signs, you know, right next to each uh, group of isopods, um, little signs with a picture and the, the uh, words. We've gone to numbers on the cups and then a big post with all the pictures. Uh, the latest um transition that i made and i don't know if it's working or not but 
um, I have a QR code so people can scan, yeah. they can go right to the store and then go, oh, that's a clown isopod. But again, that's not touchy-feely that I think a lot of people really, really want. Yeah, I did see at one of the shows recently, and it wasn't this last one, but somebody had stickers with a picture that they put on the top of their container. Oh, yeah. And she had a ton on the table, so it was easy for her to find them that way. But she had a picture of what the isopod looked like in the container, but you couldn't see the isopods because the picture was on the top. I mean, you had to oh. then they had to pick them up and tip them then. And interesting. So, so it, was it was just a, a little, you know, it was inch just by an inch. inch by inch picture of the actual isopod, and that was it. Just okay. the color picture of it. Very interesting. So that yeah. might work. I am my own worst nightmare. I am the person that goes and wants to pop up everything and stick, you know, I can't see. So I've got my glasses off and I'm, I'm looking into it. Um, and I can see that becoming a disaster if the lids are kind of difficult to open and people just pop them open and isopods are flying everywhere. And now the lids are sticking and you're trying to open it and two other people are waiting to yeah. ask you a question. And now you're panicking. Yeah, it, it, there's got to be an easy, <clears throat> quick way, and we haven't figured it out. Although the sticker sounds interesting, there is a vendor that sells cards, you know, just a business-sized card with the isopod information, and somebody sent me their name. If anybody wants the name of the person that, that makes these cards, I could, I'd gladly send you the information. Just oh, you mean know. like the, the cloud? They lay them down on the table to set up. Uh, when they set up their table, oh. they lay them with them. Oh, 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 yeah. You know what? There's someone that does that for dart frogs. They actually look like um, like what you see in a zoo. I have some. Yes. 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 Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. I thought I had some on geckos here on the table, but I don't no. see it. Um, I know. Exactly. Yeah, yes. exactly. It's a, picture right. of yeah. a little bit of care information. Now, we've gone over to a signage that says, you know, arid, tropical, and it shows some of the, the isopods that you can select from there just to kind of break the ice and start somebody in that direction. But it also helps me. Well, <laughs> yeah, if you have a lot of people that you're dealing with, a lot of customers, then anything that speeds up that process or starts a conversation is, is right. very helpful. Right. Oh, go ahead. I'm just checking here. Can you keep reptiles in there also? Um, I do. So I'm guessing yes. I, I have morning geckos in that room. So uh, she did ask me what was in each um, enclosure. And of course, the day she was there was the day that I had the ant infestation and all my frogs were like in bins. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh it was it's awful. Magic. I'm like dripping sweat, like <laughs> trying to get everything in order. Yeah. But she did ask, like, what's this? What's this? What's this? So I assume it's okay. I'm I'm a big um uh I have a huge fear of anything getting into the bins. Uh there was and I, I've told this story before, so some people will recognize this, but I've collected from outside, brought it in black plastic bags out in the sun for two or three months, and I brought some in, set up a culture for dairy cows. I had two or three cultures going at the time. But after about five or six months, the cultures grew. And then all of a sudden, just like within a month, just went down to 20 or 30. And one day I went to, in to clean up and I picked up the, the uh, cork bark and moved some uh, substrate around. And all these centipedes came. Oh, oh, right? oh right? terrific. It was horrific. Um, so you're thinking, you're thinking, I'm going to move some substrate. I'm going to see some baby, little baby dairy cow. And all of a sudden, centipedes, you know, this big. No, oh, my friend Lisa is on right now. She's she's having a heart attack. Oh, no, no, oh, no. I'm, I have a big fear of anything in there except isopods. People ask me all the time, can I keep an isopod with this or that? Or if you're doing a bioactive, do isopods in the body? But don't, if you're doing an isopod tub, keep it as isopods and spring tails, but that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does anybody else randomly? Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. Emily is saying, does anybody else randomly find spiders in their enclosures? Emily, one of the, <laughs> I swear, you always have to bring up spiders with me. Um, so once, about once a year, you know, I don't know why, but I'll lift up a, a piece of cork bark and I'll hold it in my hand and I'll be looking at the 
dairy cows and I'll look over and sure enough, there's a big fat about this big oh, with fangs. Uh, they are, they're, they're this big. They are fangs and, big and it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, they're not. They're, 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 okay. they're, yeah, it they're freaks me out. I don't know if you guys have it, and I don't even know what the name of it is. We just call it like pod killer spider. There, and when we would go, you know, um, we actually go potting. It's nice at the reserve. Well, we'll we'll turn it over, try to see like under a rock what we see. And there's a spider that specifically like kills and consumes isopods. Oh. Um, and I keep waiting for it to appear in a bin, but so far. It's just ants. And um, when you have ants in your bin, it is the work because there's nothing you can do. You can set up a new bin and then you pick them out one by one because you can't transfer anything. Nothing. I would tend to agree. And those people that find mites in, and I, I try to sympathize but once you find mites, it's a it's kind of a done deal because you're, anything you transfer out of that bin will probably have those mites on it as well. Yeah, I'm just checking for questions. We've got a couple of questions here, but anybody else, anybody know. with a question specific with the permits or the process or the inspection, please throw them up right now. We're going to stay for about another five minutes. We've we've okay. kept Jennifer. She's been very very good with her time and, and, uh, but anybody else with uh, questions about the shipping process? I'm not finding questions. Okay. They're talking about if you get spiders in your house to use vinegar, spray vinegar and then sprinkle cinnamon over it. Flamethrowers. <laughs> I just kind of escort them outside. Yeah, we do. We do too. We catch them and, and I actually have a vacuum, a little hand vacuum that I'll catch and then we'll dump it out. Outside. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind to spiders. Um, I never realized I could have this low level of like non empathy that I now have for these ants. I can appreciate that. And a good friend of ours that also does um, uh, YouTube. I was actually on his show Tuesday as a huge fan of ants. And he has lots of ants enclosures in his basement and he has his uh, pods down in his basement. I just keep thinking that's, you know, that's one day, one day. <laughs> yeah. You know, I try to like conjure images of like little tiny ants being cute and like carrying a leaf. And I just, I, I can't do it. <laughs> Frank said they're, they're fascinating. They are fascinating. They are fa Frank said he put the wood louse spiders in his dairy cow bins to control their population. Wow. <laughs> I'd like to see a video on that. That'd be pretty cool. Not, I don't. I think that's the pod killing spider. Oh. Ah, very cool. I don't know if Victor has a question, <laughs> Wally. <laughs> um, here. Um, this has been fantastic. Nanette lots has. Of, I've got yeah, lots Nanette of has three or, and, and again, folks, we've been doing this for. We've been shipping for three or four years, and we've been under the the permits obviously for since I did the permit thing, but. This sharing of information, you've had a couple of great, great points that we were not even thinking about. So I greatly appreciate that. And hopefully everybody else has a takeaway from this show. Um, this has been something that since we had started talking and then, you know, I, I uh, sent a feeler out to you if you'd like to do a YouTube. Um, when you said yes, I was like, this is going to be great information. It's taking a huge... And, uh, and like I said, I offered um, earlier, if anyone wants to reach out to me, um, you know, to to see any of the paperwork or look at the conditions of the permit, um, you know, just go ahead and, and I think you're going to put my email somewhere. Um, I'll be happy to to share it with you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And uh, Victor is asking about uh, sent us sending specimens to Florida. Um, you'd have to, I don't think we do. The one thing with our store is that we no, no, can't. No. He said, if you've sent your specimens, remember Florida sent that oh, special request. Oh, they did. Yeah. We haven't had yeah. the time, unfortunately. So Florida has a very specific requirement that you send individual specimens. Uh, have you done that, Jennifer? No. So same thing with, um, I, and I won't even remember where it is. Um, let's just say Minnesota. It's one of the M states where they wanted me to send them uh, dead springtails to make sure that it was the correct um, species of springtails. And I said, you know what? I don't need a permit in that state for that. Like, um, 
I kind of, I'm sorry, Florida. I kind of avoid Florida because it's just too much trying to figure out what, what the rules are and, and doing things right. So uh, I pretty much just don't ship to Florida or Hawaii. That, you know, we, we I'm kind of in the same boat. I, I kind of thought it's on my to-do list. It's kind of high, medium to high priority, but um, gosh, so much other, so many other things to do. Yeah. And it, it's a huge requirement to in, individually collect and, and send and, so we're looking at it. We just had, um, to your point, Victor, I just haven't sent it yet. Maybe in the fall. And especially with the warmer weather. And, you know, about a month ago, we just said, we're not going to ship anything yeah. in this weather. Yeah. So, yeah. Same thing here. We finally just, it, I mean, now it's in the hundreds. So you're welcome, Frank. Um, unless anybody has any more questions, I'd like to once again. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for taking the time to join us and to go over this. This isn't easy stuff, folks. This isn't easy. You get inspected. You know, it's a huge anxiety kind of thing. And for somebody to go, yeah, they came in to my place and, you know, I had to change this, this, this. It's something that a lot of people might not want to do. And I greatly appreciate you taking the time and sharing all of this information with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I put it up there for her. Go ahead. Go ahead and, and go she's ahead and read. reading it already. You're, You're going to do amazing. Don't be nervous. Yes, don't be nervous. No, You're quite obviously a very well-organized person, and you are going to rock your first show. I'm that kind of person. Married. I'll, like, forget something really important. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll be fine. Like, I left my phone at home on the table. No, oh, no, no, no. Um, we can talk. Yes, just yeah. let's get together and let's talk. And I'm going to bring in a, a friend that's going to be helping me out at the show, too, because she. Excellent. She's a huge Wally and Nanette fan. Uh, um, Nanette does a lot with these shows in, as far as the preparation. Everybody will tell you Nanette does all the work here. And, you know, I will I do 1%. Nanette is, no. does the 99%. So no. uh, Nanette will be involved with this as well. Um, okay, somebody did have a question right yeah. here, really quick. Okay, not about permits, but what's the best insulation for shipping pods? Sorry for making that. No, that's our. That's certainly all right, Just Boss. Yeah, not at oh. all. Um, most of the. Uh, it. Hold on one second. I've got it right here. Sure. And while Jennifer looks for that, we wish you the very, very best, Emily. This is a fun time for you guys, and and between that, the baby. Oh and my gosh, I. tons of stuff going on. It's the uh, it's like a black foam in. Um, you know, I tried to um, go the route of like Lowe's, and I got like the foam insulation that's got the silver on the backing, and then I ordered like a a cutter for it, and I said this is too much work. It yeah. is. So was it one of those burning uh, guns? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. too much work. No. You know, there's there's so much else going on. Order the foam inserts, and uh, so th those go in. Um, depending on the weather, it's either a, a phase twenty two or a um, you know a heat pack. But there hasn't been any heat pack needed in a while. Um, if you get denied a permit, um, so when I did my USDA permit, my APHIS permit. I was given the list and said, this is your list. Uh, yeah. With California, <clears throat> I got everything approved in advance. So there was a lot of email back and forth. Um, can, can I keep these? Can I send these, these, these? And then they would approve it, deny it, approve it, deny it, approve it, deny it. Um, so by the time that we had gone through everything on my list, I put together the addendum to the permit and it, we were ready to go. Perfect. And, you know, uh, they have lists. I, if I remember, I know in the video that I did, I directed you to the site with the list. Uh, so absolutely check that list before you do any submissions. And you can actually, if I'm not mistaken in, and I think I said this in the video too, but you can go and you can select from their list. You can go, Okay, mm -hmm. I want permits for this, this, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. So you don't have to, you know, kind of come up. And that, that was the biggest problem I had. The very first uh, permit that I submitted, I came up with my own. And Carlos messaged me and goes, 
where did you come up with these names? Because they're not on the list. Yeah. Uh, what list? Go here, Wally, and select from this list. Oh, well, that's a lot easier. Yeah. Question on that, though. If they update something and they decide all of a sudden that they don't want you to have that any longer or to be able to sell it, do they send you? I, I don't know how that works. Did they send you something? I'm, I'm going to guess that they – I'm going to hope that they do. So, you know, my list – and now I'm trying to look for it one more time. So the addendum to my permit is like – four or five pages. I do not have all of these species, right? Um, and so, you know, um, I don't even know how to say it. Um, I don't have the Florida fast. Let's just use that as an example. Yeah, perfect. But I put it on the permit because I may okay. mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, yes. So I told her, so she also had me send her a list after our inspection of what I'm actually keeping right now. Um, so I asked her if I go to the reptile super show and I bring home, Oh, I need to make one more point too. I'm sorry. I, I won't. Ooh, you guys. You're uh, fine. Uh, do I have to let you know that I now have this species? And they said, no, if it's on okay. the list on the addendum, then that's okay. okay. Uh, one other thing that I did want to add because we we chatted about it real quick. Um, and um, how we're not able to get addresses from everybody. They did ask me for a list of where I obtained my original isopods. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. And if I ordered them online, who I got them from. Yes, yes, yes. That yes. was a, uh, yes. a moment. Um, and so, you know, I was really honest with her. I said, Honestly, it was like I went to Repticon. There was a kid with blonde hair, and that's who I got it from. I think his name was Mike. You know, I really did not know um, the names of, of a lot of people where I got them from. Because a lot of I most of them were in person at like a reptile expo. Yep. Okay. And, and we're in the same exact boat. I could probably go through, you know, being the Excel geek that I am. I can go back through and probably come up with 95, 98% of the, the original sources of the isopods, but there's going to be some that I don't know because I probably walked by somebody's table and said, yeah, I'll, I'll take some prunosis, you know, uh, creams or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's just going to be some of that. Yeah. And the good news is California people, if anybody ever listens to this and they're from California, is that the list is extensive. Right. So it's it's much more open um, than the than the USDA permit. They've got almost everything on there. There's a couple of uh, ones that are not on there that are disappointing. But honestly, my Bolivari are on there. My hops are on there. My Jestroy are on there. Um, that's just, so, you know. So does that list the California list? That's the wide the uh, uh, other list, APEX list? The the yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. So yeah. I keep and sell Bolivari in California. I can sell them at a show and I can ship them to someone in San Francisco, let's say. I still can't ship them to you. Okay, okay. there you go. Okay. There you go. Yep. All right. Okay. Right. Um, and that's like us with Hoffs. We can sell them at a show. Yeah. In Wisconsin, yeah. we cannot take them to another location. That's exactly okay. true. Emily is asking, do you find your, you are more profitable by having the permits? Um, go ahead, Jennifer, and then I'll answer too. So, um, no, no doubt some people um, don't like me talking about this stuff. So, um, and the other thing is, is that I think, when you have people that buy a lot of pods, let's say at expos and they are not receiving this information that tells them that they need to freeze their isopods for three days. Um, and then you do have someone that sends them that information. Um, I don't always think that I give people warm and fuzzy feelings by doing that. Um, so more profitable, probably not. I, I'm going to 100% agree with you. So um, 
I first found out about this from getting isopods from uh, Pet Peds and Pods, Rachel. And she had all the paperwork and everything. It was either her or Miss, Misty uh, Thompson. But anyways, we got isopods. What is all this stuff? with? Oh, boy, I better find out about this. And, you know, I just wanted to be more informed. And especially with, you know, some YouTubes, I didn't want to say the wrong thing to, to anybody. Um, so we did it from the regula regulatory standpoint and to be compliant and everything. But I tell you what, if you're standing behind a table and you're selling isopods and somebody comes up to you and says, I'd really like to buy this. Here's my, you know, 20 or $30. Thank you very much. Oh, do you have the permit? And for you to be behind the table and say, um, what permit? That's and kind of playing off of what you exactly said there. That's not a good situation to be in and that would cause some confusion from the customer the buyer as to your <clears throat> credibility if i can say that you know kind of bluntly I well, I recently saw there was a documentary like a six-part documentary called bug out yes Can you see that so there's there's a lot of information in there about aphis and how they operate and they are in the facebook groups and they yeah. do things um, through the mail to see how they arrive. So, you know, it's just another thing like, you know, just make sure that for you, for whatever you have, like I said, these larger facilities that are containment facilities, they have a much different permit than I do. So you can't say Jennifer can, you know, do this and it's appropriate for somebody else. Um, but, but that's just been my experience with it. Um, yeah. But, when things are like the wild west out there, I don't know. Oh, the documentary, I think it was on, was it on the IMDB channel that's now like Freebie or Zuby or just um, Google bug out. And it's, um, it's about a bug museum in Philadelphia, I think it is. And it's, it's really fun. It's a fun, interesting uh, show. It's it's pretty in, like you were saying before. It's very in depth as well. It's not a, a you know it's not on Netflix or anything like that. You're right. You have to you know kind of search for it. Um, I've had you here for an hour and a half, Jennifer. Oh, okay. Way over. I keep thinking of all these extra things to say, but if anybody no. has any questions, just feel free to reach out. Absolutely. Again, thank you very thank much. Thank you. I want to oh, thank everybody that join is joining tonight as well. Um, this can be interpreted as a kind of a regulatory government and everybody had great questions and wonderful comments, except for that one that I had to bounce out of the, the yeah. chat. But thank you very much, everybody. And again, thank you very much, Jennifer, for, for joining us tonight. I thank thoroughly you. enjoyed this. Learned a lot. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.